Hello guys, uh, welcome to another FU Money show. Um, I was, I have some news today. I was uh, yesterday. I didn't make any any new video, and there's a reason for that. I was waiting for two new pieces of hardware for my streams. Um, one of them, I guess you can see already behind me. There's a green screen, so I have now a chroma key and you don't have to see those uh, ugly stairs behind me just like before in the previous videos um, but now i hope i hope we can we can have uh, nicer backgrounds and maybe some even some uh, videos running in the background while we do some some nice stuff in the videos the other piece of hardware that i was waiting also arrived today and it was the new web camera that i'm using for the streams now which has much better image than the previous one so I hope that from now on everything goes smoothly so the audio the audio is okay now the webcam the image is really good and we have a chroma key behind me so we don't have to watch those ugly backgrounds anymore so uh, having said that um, let's go to the charts and see what's happening okay so before before i go to the bitcoin chart let me just check something uh let's see how the model the price to time model is going in real time uh so wow we are above the exponential line again no bueno no bueno i don't like to see that i think we are let me just zoom in for you guys to see it better okay so here we are i don't like this we are again going above the exponential line so in my book this means that we are a bit extended it's a bit too much extended already um, so as you can see what happened in the previous two times that we went above the exponential curve here we had uh, 20 if i'm not mistaken if i remember correctly we had a 20 percent correction and then we had another you know move up above the line we had another correction but this one should have been a bit bigger because you know the the candle above the exponential line is bigger than this one this one was just half the candle this one was the entire candle and the candle close also above the exponential line so the correction should have been like to this level here actually this would be even a level of support so it would be nice to have it here at the 40,000 but now we are attempting to go above the exponential line again for the third time so let's see what happens so I'm just going to delete the circle here going back to the original size you can see the entire model like this so um, so as I said before uh, this is no bueno <laughs> I don't like that I would much prefer you know the rise of price going below the exponential line just like we had in the you know the previous um, the previous uh, bull run of 2017 where you can see here that the price just rose all the time just below the line the major corrections were maybe one two three and that's it this one is a real really sh um, you know small one um, I think we are going up you know too high too fast for a sustainable bull run without major incidents so let's see what happens uh, maybe if we extend too much above this uh, above the middle exponential line here maybe we could have something like the bull run of 2013 where the extended price you know extended so much to the upside that the correction was 75 percent before <coughs> sorry for that before just having a second bull run for the top of two December 2013 
Um, so I would not like to see something like this this year, but it seems that if we continue like that, uh, very probably we are, you know, probably we are going to have something like a bigger correction soon. Uh, let me check here, 100,000. So, like, I I can see this if if we go directly from here from the current price, which is 57,000. Imagine if we go to 100,000, which is here. I can see a big correction before you know the last run to the top. So let's see what happens. Okay, so let's go to Bitcoin chart. So as I as I expected, so uh, we had we had here. Um, I was expecting to have the third range boundary here, something like that. You know, having a channel which is almost horizontal with the second range boundary here, expecting a fourth range boundary uh, somewhere between the second and this line of support around the. 5152, which would be a very short fourth range boundary here. But for now, let's just, you know, let's just continue to move the third range boundary. Before I before I move the third range boundary, just look here. The price touched the context, the resistance context, which is this gray box, you know, behind the price here. And as soon as it touched the, the context box here, the resistance context, it went down. And this was, wow, well, almost 50, so 58 to 55. So this was like a $3,000 correction immediately as soon as it touched the um, resistance context which is drawn by the indicator, by the way, so this is not drawn by me. The only thing that is drawn by me in this chart are the white channels, like this one here on the left, and, you know, these little orange boxes where I identify some key points for the, for the Bitcoin price. So basically, let's move this, which is still not confirmed, because as you can see, I can even zoom in a little bit more. You can see that the zigzag line, the yellow line coming down here is a dashed line, so it's not filled. And this means the third range boundary is not confirmed yet. Uh, it has to go a little bit more time and down in price just to be confirmed. So let's put this on the normal size that I was showing you guys. Uh, let's grab the third range boundary, move it a bit here. So maybe this is the last time I have to move the third range boundary. In either case, I could expect a third range boundary like a target for even if we, if we continue to go up, because there are no bears. I mean, I've been watching this market and I don't see any bears. Bitcoin is trying to go down sometimes, uh, some sellers, but not really bears, you know, selling like big whales uh, selling. So it's really hard for the price to go down. Um, but in the eventual case that we just continue to go up because of that, because there are no bears, there are no sellers, nothing, I, I don't see any any sell big sellers right now, I would have a target maybe around 62, you know, in the low 60s to mid 60s, maybe maximum 64. This could still be a third range boundary, a very bullish third range boundary, which means that the fourth would be to the upper side of this context channel instead of maybe coming down here to the second range boundary level so which means that if we continue this so imagining imagining the third range boundary is in uh, we could just have a channel let me draw a channel here uh, something like that Wait a and
something like this. So let me drop the fibs now. So you see here the, the white dashed line in the middle of this uh, ranging channel, uh, the famous dump zone as I call it. Um, I see the price coming to this dashed line. Actually, the, this line coincides with a very nice support around 51, 51,000 we have here, a line of support, which would be a nice place for a retracement. However, I would expect the fourth range boundary to come a bit lower, maybe to this support here. Let me just draw the support for you guys. So we have a nice support here, around 48-ish. Yep, around here we have a nice support, as you can see here, 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 and here, resistance, and here support, and here support. So this is, this would be a nice uh, range, uh, a nice level, uh, price level for the fourth range boundary, having something like, I just put this to the left. So imagining that we follow the same pattern, we could have something like the fourth range boundary continuing to form around here. So for me, this would be a nice uh, area. Speculative area. Where is, oh, okay, this is on top of the other one. So, just change the colors. I should make the orange the default color here, just not to have to change this all the time. And this one too. So for me, this would be a nice uh, speculative area to go long on Bitcoin if the fourth range boundary actually comes down in this eventual scenario that we discussed previously. Um, doing something like that. Hitting the... Mm, yeah, there's a bit, there's a bit of resistance there. So maybe doing something like that and then going up again that would be a very nice scenario by the way because then we have more time to move below the exponential line on the price to time model and and that would be great here uh, the other scenario is we have maybe let me check here if we have some other support mm -hmm. yeah we have another support around 50 54 55 here that's a bit too much yeah so the next one would be yeah the next one would be around here exactly so actually we have like three supports right now the other one is here almost the middle almost the middle of the channel the ranging channel exactly yeah so this would be around 51 so actually these are the levels I'm I'm expecting being this one the best the best level of support to have some long entries here maybe you know getting to this resistance then resistance now support then going back up and can continue the bull run uh, the other scenario is just, you know, we move on from here, we break the all-time high, we come back for support again, and then we go up. You know already that I would, I would say this is a very, a bit irrational, not very, but a bit irrational uh, for now because we are overextended according to the price-to-time model. And 
The other scenario is just, you know, going sideways around this support here for some time and then breaking up again. I guess too soon because we didn't have time. We would we would in my opinion we would need at least 2 weeks from today, 2 weeks from today just, you know, coming back down, making a force range boundary, then going back up and while doing this in the next week and maybe the week after that we would have the time to go below the exponential curve again and then have a much you know sustainable um sustainable price rise instead of just going exponentially and so let's just uh have a look here at the mri and the funding rate not to make this video too long so let me just increase this a bit So the MRI is giving us a two, a one, two, can, but this one is coming down again. So I guess, you know, this shows to me, if, even the volume is very, very small. This, this shows to me that, you know, there are no bears. No one is trying to sell, but also all the retail is just waiting for a, a nicer opportunity to go in since we didn't have any institutional bias lately and that's why bitcoin is just going sideways here and not even having a a one two nine you know sequence in the mri uh the rsi is coming down the macd is bearish the rsi is bearish uh yep also here let me check this. Whoa, yeah. I guess all the oscillators are bearish, and the funding rate, even being below my, you know, my alert level, which is uh, zero dot eleven, it's going up. So let's let's w we should always check the funding rate in the one hour chart because it's much more accurate. Yeah, it's going up. So right now the funding rate is around .04. So this was really coming down when, when Bitcoin went up here, but now it's going up again. So, you know, it's becoming bearish-ish. <laughs> okay, so let's go back to the same zoom as before. So that's basically my uh, quick analysis for today. You know, we are just forming really, if you look here, you have higher highs, except this one, then you have higher lows, but nothing is really happening. There's no volatility, uh, no big sellers, no big buyers. And that's why Bitcoin is just going sideways like this. So I'm waiting for a big move soon, maybe to the downside if the, let's go here, maybe to the downside just to, you know, finish this um, video of today. Maybe this big move could be to the downside to form a fourth range boundary around this speculative area that I would love very much uh, to go long here. Maybe the big move will come like this, like an irrational move to the upside if some institutional buyer, you know, just buys another billion or another, you know, two billions or something like that. And m then maybe Bitcoin just goes up like crazy. But I'm not, um, I'm still waiting for the patterns to form. Some people are talking about a cup and handle here. I don't believe this is yet a cup and handle. This is not a cup and handle because for you to have a cup and handle, the handle has to be at least 50% of the cup size, which means that we would have to come at least to this support and then going up. And this could be considered a cup and handle, but still for now, 
I don't consider this a copy and handle. So let's see what happens. And I guess, let me just stop screen share. So I guess um, tomorrow I will come back with another, another analysis. Let's see how this develops. If we go down for a fourth range boundary, if we go up in a completely unexpected way because someone bought one or two billion Bitcoin in Bitcoin, or if we just go sideways for some time more, which is also not bad because then it gives us time to go below the line of the price to time model. Um, but, uh, you know, I guess it's, uh, this is it for today. So no big news, nothing. And before I forget, I guess for the first time, I will tell you, smash the like button for, um, you know, let's see if um, <laughs> the YouTube algorithm actually is listening to us. Uh, just, you know, share the videos with your friends and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.